giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with PTC. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome back to First Updates Now Nor'easter Region Recap, and welcome to our last of three shallow dives from across the country tonight. We're going in detail with the upper echelon of our regions and bringing it to you here live. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Audrey. And joining us today, we have perennial New York City powerhouse. Here with us, it's 694 Cypals. They're here to take a shallow dive into their 15 0 and 0 truly undefeated season you guys want to introduce yourselves a little bit more and also what you do for the team? Hi, I'm Brianna and I'm a junior. On Stipulse, I'm the Vice President of Engineering and I led the design of our climber this year. Hello, I'm Jeremy. I'm a current junior on Stipulse. I'm part of our engineering department and I led the design on, of our intake this year. Uh, I'm Sam and I'm a sophomore at Stipulse. Uh, I'm a software engineer and I program the control system in the shooter. And I'm also the lead developer for Stylip, which is a project that uh, our team has been working on. Ooh, great to have you on the show tonight, all of you. And uh, now I'm going to bring on Tyler to talk a little bit more about our giveaway tonight. Yeah, we got a great giveaway from our friend Howard coming in with the awesome Star Wars FTA bear pin. You guys got to check this out. These are awesome. So we're going to be giving away two of them to one winner. Uh, there'll be a keyword later on during the show for you to type in. So don't forget to be ready for that. Uh, so that'll happen in about 15 minutes or so. Um, you do have to be following the channel in order to be eligible to win. And don't forget our subscribers do get five times luck. So good luck to everybody. Keyword coming later on during the stream. And thanks again to Howard for the sweet pin. Nice. So the way we're going to go through this is we're going to ask you to elaborate on some general questions about your build in this season. And then after we run few, through a few of those, we'll pull some questions from chat. So let's start off with some general questions about build season. How did you how did that go for you guys this year? Um, and how did having no bag impact your build? Um. There were quite a few things that were new for us going into build season. Most importantly, our move into a different lab. Two Stuyvesant alumni were gracious enough to donate a large sum of money to our team, which was then put some extens towards some extensive lab renovations, which we're very lucky to have. But due to some unfortunate circumstances, our usual lab was nowhere near ready for use by the time build season rolled around. So we had to move our operations into a ceramics lab and our machining capabilities were severely impaired. Our machining team had to learn to work with a limited number of unfamiliar machines, and there were a lot of complications along the way. Um, but otherwise, we tried to maintain more or less the same schedule as we had in the past. Two weeks of prototyping, CAD marathon, construction until week five-ish, and then SC has free reign until engineering has to fix it when it breaks. Um, <laughs> but because of some unexpected setbacks this year, construction trickled into mid-February, so that made us all the more grateful for the no-bag situation. And also for the past two years, we've been building two robots so that we can iterate on and practice with one while the other's bagged. Uh, but because we were able to concentrate our energy and resources into Edwin alone this year, I think that we gave him a lot more love and we're able to produce a good <laughs> robot. Uh, so ceramics so, lab, um, yeah. doubling back on that, like pottery, like did you have a kiln? And how was that transition? Did you have to move your machines there? Well, it, it's a much smaller lab in comparison to the usual space we have. So um, one of our mentors who works at our school is was gracious enough to let us work in his 
his ceramics lab, which he usually teaches a pottery class in. Uh, <laughs> but that also meant we had to move all our equipment in alongside kilns and like a lot of clay. And it was, it was pretty drastic, but we worked through it. It's great to hear. <laughs> So Sam, do you have um, more to follow up with on uh, oh. sort of your development with uh, the robot this year in build season? Uh, so yeah, no bag day kind of changed a lot with the way that SE developed. So obviously there's the benefit of having a lot more development time, which allowed us to accomplish a lot more. But there's also more time that engineering had the bot and not SE. But we were lucky enough to have old bots to use. And we had about like two or three usable old bots that we were able to test like any code that we had on our mind, which allowed us to get like a lot of small ideas that would have otherwise never developed out, like automatic PID tuning or like uh, some filtering algorithms that we were looking into. And about PID, uh, now that we didn't have a practice bot, it meant that we could put more resources into tuning the actual bot and not like fake tuning the practice bot and then tuning the real bot once we got to competition which meant that we could spend less time doing useless debugging. So automated PID tuning, can you go more into depth with that? Uh, how does that work? What is that? Um, so I don't have the Wikipedia page uh, for it, <laughs> but it was basically, um, so it's, it's, it characterizes the way that your robot moves so that like if like how heavy your drivetrain is, it basically what it does is it like shakes the robot back and forth. And um, when we did this with the shooter, it would like change the pitch of the shooter back and forth because it would change speeds. And uh, it kind of sounded like a beat. And then like everybody around us started like dancing to it. But <laughs> basically it like changes the speed back and forth. It starts recording the characterization of like how it would change speed. And uh, if you plug it into a formula, you can get some like pretty nice PID. Uh, values. We have it all on our on Stylib for like anybody to use, and there's documentation for it. Nice. So let's get a little bit more into some mechanical robot details. Why did you choose this direction for your design, and uh, and even more in detail, why did you go um, short versus tall? Uh, historically, tall versus short. <laughs> Historically, we've had integration issues with our robot and how the mechanisms are situated. And there's definitely some strategic advantage to having a low bot. Uh, having that trench run is really nice, but even on our priority list, we listed high scoring and climbing as two high priority items. And these factors lend themselves to a tall bot. So we decided that considering it makes it significantly more complicated to design a high performing low bot, and we were not working in our usual lab with our usual machines, that a, a tall bot was the way to go. <laughs> yeah, more on the mechanical side of things, a tall bot also lends itself to a flatter shot arc. And since we prioritized interport accuracy a lot, we wanted to do that. And it also would simplify our climber so we didn't have to build some crazy four stage elevator or tilting telescoping arms that we just didn't have the resources for. And um, as far as the rest of our robot goes, a lot of that was informed based on our prototyping. We came up with a bunch of intake and hopper prototypes and some climber stuff. And we only had one shooter prototype since day one, we knew we wanted a hooded shooter because the backspin would make our shots more consistent. So for our intake, we came up with a mechanism roller, the 97, a prototype of 973's 2012 intake with, with the polycord funneling towards the center. We had a V hopper like a lot of the Open Alliance teams did, and we built a spindexer as well. And for our climber prototypes, we came up with a winch that would deploy a hook onto the bar and then winch us up a lot kind of like um, some of the RI3D teams. We also had a buddy climb prototype and a telescoping arm, and we were considering a standard elevator as well, but never prototyped it because we had a lot of experience building elevators from 2018 and 2019. So for our intake and hopper, we ended up going with what we have because we found that the centering, 
any intake that centers balls, like the Mechanum or 973-2012 intake, they would jam when we tried to pick up two or more at once. And since ground intake was our, the second item on the priority list after drive, we didn't want that. And our Spindexer prototype didn't work, so we kind of, so we ended up with initially at least polycord rollers and that V hopper. But um, a, a, about a week after we decided on that, we found that polycord had too much tension to like actually work on our competition robot. So we swapped to Versa rollers for our intake, and that worked really well at our first competition. And for our climber, because a lot of we saw that a lot of RI 3D robots were swinging as they were climbing up, we didn't want to hit our teammates, so we didn't go for that winch climber. Our buddy climb was also very untested; it was like barely done by the time we had to decide on our final design. And there were space and weight concerns for a standard elevator, so we decided to go with our telescoping arm. That's a lot of prototyping for two weeks. Yeah. How do you guys divide your assets and your team into that many prototyping groups and still have these outcomes? I mean, we have a very big team. I think we had over 100 students this year. Wow. OK. <laughs> yeah, so we have a lot of manpower to do things like this. And we also have very dedicated members who are willing to put in the hours to like, come up with all these prototypes and like actually build them. OK, that is absolutely awesome. So moving on from your build season and all these prototyping things and all the CS stuff that goes into it, let's move on to your first competition. Um, that was week one, Palmetto. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. You guys are a New York City team. Um, how did that competition go for you? And how was the experience of traveling outside of your region? Uh, so I guess I'll start. Um, well, this uh, competition for, um, I mean, I'm, I was mainly focused on the software side. So when it came to issues, it was mainly with like CV and uh, alignment auto issues. and. Um, so we had a couple issues with CV, like where the, the line, basically it came down to the limelight didn't have a high enough frame rate. Uh, we, got, we got around to fixing that, but um, Palmetto was a, you know, it, we, we didn't get that much sleep, which I felt like was a little bit of a disadvantage <laughs> to us and our drivers. Um, like, uh, cause we had something like a 14 hour bus ride and um, wow. it was very, uh, very little leg room which being tall is uh, a pretty big problem. And I feel like, <laughs> I feel like our drivers uh, had a pretty big disadvantage there when it came to sleep. But overall, we had relatively few issues with CV compared to 2019. Um, in, in regards to some adjustments that we wanted to make, uh, we wanted to make adjustments to like the shooter afterwards, like adding in polyethylene to the sides to reduce left-right variation. Uh, we were also looking into some ball avoidance techniques since we were experiencing a lot of over ball driving during the competition. So we were looking into like lowering our bumpers or something of that nature. Uh, similarly, mm -hmm. kind of, we were also investigating the implementation of a motorized balancing mechanism called, we call the yo-yo. <laughs> One of our <laughs> team members had been developing the yo-yo throughout build season. And though it wasn't quite ready for use by Palmetto, we were considering implementing it for Hudson Valley. The yo-yo, that's quite a name. That is quite um, a name. <laughs> yeah. So can one of you speak to kind of the experience of going undefeated and how you guys kind of manage that through the competition? Uh, well, I mean, we were undefeated for, I mean, like, obviously, like, throughout the entire competition, we were undefeated. <laughs> but it didn't really feel like that at most times because there were a lot of time like for most of the competition we weren't actually in first because of the way the ranking points was sorted out so like i feel that if we were undefeated and at the top of the ranking like we would have sort of like slacked off a little bit and fell off the leaderboard but because we were never like technically in first uh i feel like our drivers had like a lot more motivation to actually like get all the way there 
So with that, we're going to take a quick break to talk about one of our new sponsors, PTC. Tyler? Yeah, uh, just want to give a big shout out to our friends at PTC uh, who, if you don't know about it, have the Robots to the Rescue Challenge coming up. A uh, very exciting thing where teams can win their share of over $7,000 uh, that you can use for your team. Registration costs, uh, other team fees and expenses come up. Think about this, guys. It has been a rough and brutal season, and it is going to be difficult to fund develop this next year. A lot of teams are going to be struggling for uh, fees and funds, and this is a fantastic way for both FRC and FTC teams to earn money for their team. And, I mean, let's take the money part aside. You get to learn to use a really cool program called Onshape. If you're not familiar with it, it is a phenomenal program. It can be used on practically any device because it's web-based. It's all done in the cloud. Super cool stuff with that. So make sure you go check it out. Go to onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. You can use the dashes or not. It doesn't matter. And get a great opportunity uh, and submit your de your uh, design by May 15th. All you got to do is pick something that uh, goes against the challenge, something that you want to create and build that you think is going to help society. So go ahead and do that. And that's your opportunity to win. Uh, and they're going to be doing a big show uh, uh, later on in May as well, too. So once again, onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Sign up today. Yeah, I absolutely adore Onshape. Um, speaking of learning new skills, what have you guys been doing since build season and since the cancellation of the season? Uh, how have you guys been improving your stuff? Um, so one of the big projects that we've been working on, like before season and like during off season was Stylid, which was... Um, something I created, but I've gotten like a few more people to work on it with me now and it's gotten like pretty big. And as I mentioned before, it was just like uh, robotics utilities that allowed us to um, like speed along development. And it also cre it, like it provided like um, an opportunity to investigate like more interesting ideas like the automatic PID that I mentioned before, as well as some filters, which ended up winning us, uh, I think, the uh, Innovation and Control Award, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and also other cool things like driving with the keyboard. So yeah, the, uh, we continued development on Stylib and been writing some documentation for it so that if any other teams were interested in taking a look at it, they could like easily access it. And um, there's another thing that we also did was uh, folding at home, which if you don't know what that is, is a Stanford project that allows people to donate compute power to medical research. And so like, I recently upgraded my computer and I wanted to test it out. And it turned out that a lot of other people on our team had computers lying around and were willing to donate that compute power. Oh, that's nice. Um, any other more technical things you guys are working on? So um, on the engineering side, um after Palmetto, we were looking to redesign our intake for our next event, which has kind of become a tradition at this point after our 2018 and 2019 seasons. So at Palmetto, we noticed a lot of kind of inconsistent human player loading. So the new intake would incorporate a ramp to make that a lot easier. And it, it would also be geared faster because we've had a lot of issues running over balls and a faster intake would have helped in that. I've also been working on a Swerve module with a few other students since last year. And since quarantine, I've come up with version three of our Swerve module, which takes a lot of inspiration from 2910 and 2471. And um, we were planning to build at least a Swerve drivetrain and potentially also an every bot on top of that to bring to an off season event. But then unfortunately, coronavirus happened and we're all stuck at home. So, so and yeah. <laughs> We've also been compiling a lot of information about our robot and its software to put into our first technical binder. Because it was a great robot and it bore a lot of wonderful lessons for our team, we felt that it was the right way to honor its memory and pass on knowledge to our future generations. So yeah, look out for that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, with that, let's get a keyword in chat for the drawing for the Star Wars FTA bear. Yeah, the keyword for that is going to be, I just it up here, uh, Stewie Plus? 
Apparently that's the keyword. Uh, we'll put it in there. Uh, but Stewie Plus, spelled just like that. Uh, type that in chat right now. That's your opportunity to win. Don't forget, you do have to be following the channel in order to win. And subscribers get five times luck. Uh, whoever wins will get two of these. And make sure you PM, us, PM first updates now your info. Uh, we'll be drawing just a couple minutes. Good luck, everybody. All right, so let's get to some rapid fire questions from chat, starting with one from Red Leader 342. How many mentors do you have and how do you manage to keep all of your students busy with over 100 students? Jeremy, you want to start us off? I mean, as far as the mentors side goes, we have um, one, we have two um, teachers at the school. And we also have a few um, college mentors that come in every once in a while to help out on the engineering side of things. And um, as far as keeping students busy, well, th there's a lot to do during build season. Like our, I don't know how many prototypes, so everyone can at least find something to do. Okay. Also from Red Leader 342, we have, how effective do you feel 342's defense was against you in finals at Palmetto? <laughs> that one's a little bit pointed. Brianna? I think, I think it was pretty effective. I mean, we <laughs> have a pretty seasoned driver and operator, which are graduating this year, which is very unfortunate. But yeah, I think that all the robots at Palmetto played very fairly, and it was honestly a tough competition. So yeah, we're, we're very grateful to go undefeated. All right, last question here. Uh, Jack 4245, for, Jack with some num numbers uh, <laughs> wants to know, were you worried at all being the only alliance without three climbers? Um, the way that we structured our alliance was that we had some, a really powerful shooter or two really powerful shooters. And the fact that we didn't have three climbers didn't really uh, bother us necessarily because we felt that our, our shooting capabilities, our offensive cop capabilities would make up for that. And also we, we knew that our partner had a motorized balance, so that would confirm us the balance. And I feel like that, that difference in points would, would help us buoy us in a way. All right, nice thinking on that. So, Tyler, let us know who won the giveaway. Yeah, we'll give one last second once again. Stewie Plus uh, for the giveaway in there. And uh, thanks again to Howard for the awesome uh, FTA beers. Always, uh, every year, coming in and, and getting some cool creativity going in with those. So, appreciate that. Uh, the winner is going to be uh, KimBob18, who I think is on <laughs> 694, isn't is that person? <laughs> so, congratulations. Uh, you have won the uh, giveaway. So, I'm sure you can get in contact with Howard in order to win. Uh, I do believe that there's lots of rigged emotes in chat, by the way, for, uh, for winning that. So, congrats to Kim Bob. Uh, I think it's going to Howard for the awesome giveaway. Uh, Howard says he can save on shipping. So, <laughs> that'll be all we have for you tonight from the Northeast. Thanks for hanging with us. And thanks so much to 694 Sidepulls. Fun is once again asking for your help to stay loud, live, and independent. So please consider giving us a little bit of your support as a treat. You can join Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or really just letting people know that this is the place um, to be to get that fun information that you and your team need. Check us out on Discord, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, even here live on Twitch and our videos on YouTube. On behalf of myself and our guest from 694, our producer Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is going to be Infimidation Shallow Dive with 5460, and we'll see you next season on the Nor'easter region. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.